like to start off by asking you if you could tell us how you first heard about uh, work in the shipyards. Well, my cousin was living in Marin City, and uh, she wrote us about coming here to work. I had planned to go to Detroit and work in the plants back there, but my cousin insists you come here, they're hiring. So that's how I heard about it. Uh, when you, you were living in... Shreveport, in, yes, Louisiana. So can you tell me, start off by telling me where you were living and how you got here. Tell me that whole story. I was um, living in Shreveport, and my cousin wrote that we should come to California and work here in the shipyards. So I agreed, and uh, so I got my ticket, and everybody chipped in a little money to give me. So I rode the train here. It was just unbelievable, but to me, I was young, it didn't much matter at that time. And I <clears throat> sat on my suitcase from Shreveport to California because they had two coaches for colored people, as they called them. And when it got to Shreveport, they were filled. So I sat on my suitcase all the way for three days to get to Marin City. And my mother prepared my food, either in a shoebox or a paper bag, whatever. We couldn't go in the dining cars. Colors weren't allowed in the dining cars. So, um, after getting here, it was just unbelievable. I, I'm excited, young, and happy. Know I'm going to make a dollar twenty an hour at least. N made that a week back home, a dollar and a half. So I dashed to the shipyard, and the people said, "Sure, we'll hire you." Oh, I'm thrilled. So um, they said, "But you have to join the union." I'm great. All right. Dash over to the union office. Lo and behold, they said. We don't take colored people. What? That's all right. I just want to work. So I go on back to the people. And then the union decided, well, we'll form an auxiliary for colored people. Well, whatever. I don't know. They, and um, after that, uh, a lot of us, I guess three or four hundred, I don't know how many, stayed out of work. We just didn't report. And um, we had a strike. In the yes, we did because why do we need an auxiliary paying regular dues, having no rights whatsoever? So we had this one fellow from Chicago named James. He was a musician, but he was working in the shipyards. And Mr. James said, oh, no, 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 no. We are going to strike. We'll stay out until uh, we can join the regular union, or none at all, whatever they decide. So they threatened us with firing us if we didn't come in and work. So no, that's all right, we're staying out. We did. And the judge in San Rafael, the judge Butler, ruled in our favor. They had to admit us. So had to break down all kind of barriers here in California, not back home. There, there were places in Sausalito, the drugstores. You couldn't sit down and eat at the counter. You could take something out. This is California. And... Uh, Segregation was just on the ramp. San Francisco had very few blacks. There was only one black doctor here, and I understand one attorney. So they hadn't seen too many of us. I understand many Asians lived here, but not many black people. So they had to get uh, introduced to what they had to live with and still do. Um, it was an exciting time. Yeah, it was... Uh just going to say, take me back a little bit to what excitement you felt when you heard about this job. It's an awful long way to go from Louisiana to California. It must have been, were you really excited that finally it was... Yes, yes. Can you describe that? Well, I, um, I had never been out of Louisiana before, and I don't know if I had ever ridden a train in the state. I doubt it. Uh, I, um, I was just thrilled, just ecstatic with joy to come to California. I'd heard California, the Golden West, and all this. I was disappointed after I got here, but um, coming here was just the joy of my life. And then, as I say, I, we wanted to do the, the right thing with the Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor. Everybody was aware of that. And we thought, well, we don't like that. We've been selling scrap metal to Japan, and they turn around, this is our friend, and it's, now it's our enemy killing Americans there in Hawaii. So that, that gave me something, and of course the money was always important. Yeah. 
tell me about that. How what, how much were you making in Shreveport? What did this represent for you? Well, like uh, I had a job at one time, even working as a, a cashier in a theater. Uh, and uh, I think I was making about $3 a week. That was good money. And here, I would be making $1.20 an hour. And I had had jobs at home where I made only uh, a dollar and a half a week. So this was just like going from rags to riches. I thought, oh my, I'll buy a house for my mother. And uh, it, it just was just happy. And she was sending us off. Got to my cousin's house, small studio apartment in Marin City. My cousin has three children. And then here I am, that makes five with twin beds, huh? So uh, we slept in shifts that way for a while. Then my father came and my cousin. Now they all had to pile in, this is seven of us by now. And uh, we slept in shifts. So when I hear of people living today in one house, 10 of them, 20, until somebody can go and buy a house of their own. That's the way it should be, as far as I'm concerned. But it was um, just uh, somebody would work days, and somebody would work uh, midnight, and then another one would work uh, swing. So some, we could have the bed, you know. You sleep while I go to work, and I sleep while you It worked out. Was Sausalito really busy during those years? Yes, yeah. yes. You have the... Uh, the Arkies, the Lewises, and the Okies. That's what they called all of us. You know, if you came from the South, you Oklahoma, you're, the, you're an Okie. And if you were from Louisiana, you're Louisie, and so forth. And uh, we had, but you know, we didn't have all this crime. We didn't have any. If a man slapped his wife, it was the talk of the neighborhood four months. We couldn't believe it. I just, and we left our doors open for the ice man to put ice in the refrigerator. And then he just shut it back. I mean, no big deal. Now you can't put enough locks or bars on your windows. Hasn't, hasn't it been a change in these, uh, what is it, 40 some years? Yeah. Well, what was your job in the shipyard? Can you describe that for me? Well, I was a welder. I was a, an ABS welder. I uh, had my training and then took the test and passed it. Um, certified welder, whatever you call them. And I uh, welded sheet metal together for the ships. I was working in the whole of the ships many times. I never saw any white people around me. I guess that was my, my, my job, to go down there with all this black smoke getting in your, my nose. And now they talk about asbestos, uh, asbestosis. So we didn't know about that then, and I didn't even think about it. But I know I, at night I had to clean my nose and get all this out. And I do not have asbestosis, thank the Lord. Was it, it was hard work then, what you were doing? Yes, oh yes. You had to pull these heavy lines, and of course you had leather suits and goggles and gloves and a hood on your head to pull down and look through that. Uh, but pulling those lines all over the ship was quite a, quite a thing. Yeah. Well, we were talking before about the work you were doing and all in the shipyard, and I wonder if you can tell me if it was uh, what your experience as a woman were there, how that work changed you, how you were received as a woman. Wasn't received well at all. The men resented it, even in wartime. But uh, they tolerated us. And uh, we didn't get, I think one woman made foreman, a white woman, and no blacks during the two years I worked there from 43 to 1945. Um, so it was just uh, something they just tolerated. Did the experience give you any sense of, what, what, what did the experience do for you? Well, young, it, it didn't bother me with that they acted so different towards us. Not really, but Mr. James is, is the person. And of course, in my later years, I am the other person to deal with. <laughs> it, it, I changed, you see, from when I was young, and now today it's it's a whole new ball game. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, did you what What happened as the war wound down? Were you uh, laid well? Off? A reduction in force. Yeah, they started laying people off, and of course, being the females and all, I think most of us went first, 
And uh, <clears throat> then we um, went to, uh, I went to try and find another job. And that was just about out. I wanted a job welding again. <laughs> you can forget it. I mean, we don't have women doing that kind of work. In fact, they wanted me to go back to being a housewife and mother. I mean, wash the clothes, cook the meals, you know, scrub, <laughs> scrub the house. I mean, but I, I just couldn't do that. So <clears throat> I, uh, I went to the telephone company and tried to get a job with the ad in that day's paper, newspaper. Well, the lady looked at me and she said, I'm sorry, the operator job is filled. I said, but this is today's paper. You know, we don't have anything. And she was embarrassed, too. You know, you can tell, do what they have to, I guess, when they're working. And uh, I said, well, all right. She said, well, you could get a job washing when, uh, dishes. I said, no, thank you. I don't want that. We're going to have to cut. We need to just pop in another camera. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. To, to your right, Spencer, that marker. Um, we, you had talked about all the different people who worked together in the shipyard. Did everybody get along well? Yes, I don't recall anything serious, uh, mm -hmm. you know, among the uh, employees. <clears throat> uh, the, some of the supervisors was a little hard to get along with, the abuse of authority. But that, was that also true outside the, the shipyards? Uh, talk to me a little bit more about what, what was going on in Sausalito and all that. Well, we, we just wasn't allowed to, you know, eat in the restaurants or buy property there or anything like that at that time. And, of course, I lived in Marin City, and uh, it was just uh, neighbors were white and then us black and maybe Asians next, and everybody treated each other with respect and concern and care. So, as I say, it wasn't any crime, and we, we got along better than we did with the people that supposed to have been integrated a long time. <laughs> and the, most people that lived in Marin City came from the South. Most of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there were just legal restrictions that y yes. affected. Yes, yes, it did. Mm -hmm. okay. um, can you talk to me a little bit more about what the work was like? And I think the plane was flying overhead, and we were talking about how hard the work was. Well, it's um, you have to pull the cables, you know, throughout the ship, and then you've got the upper deck, the lower deck, and so forth. And that was extremely hard. They, they're heavy. So I would uh, get tired with that. But my work doing the overhead and, you know, welding wasn't anything for me. I didn't mind that at all. I enjoyed it. I was alone most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Did it give you a sense of uh, strength or, or...? Oh, yes. Definitely. Can you say that for me without just saying yes to it? Oh, I, I, I definitely grew, and I felt a stronger person, a stronger female, a stronger black woman. And that has stayed with me for, and will forever. I, I really got a lot out of the shipyard experience and the way I was treated, and I wouldn't allow half of that to go on today, not with me personally or anybody else I know. Is that that's, think that's the most significant uh, way in which all of that changed you, or were there some other... Other ways in which living through those years, the, some of the difficult years of the Depression and then the experiences in the shipyards, how do you think all of that shaped you? Well, in, in the Depression, of course, I was born in 1922, as I said, um, I, I did nothing about it because my grandfather had one child, my father, and when I was born, he bought my father a 1922 star an automobile named the Star. I have photographs. And um, so w I was never hungry or really without. Of course, when I got old enough to get a job, the salary was just so small, you know. I, but other than that, the Depression didn't really do anything personally against my family or me. And But, I mean, if anyone's hurting around you, it affects you in that way. And that people were hungry, some I know. But I think the shipyards made me really wake up. See, I was, what, 21 or something like that, 22, when I came here. And that experience, oh, really. See, back home, we knew that we were segregated, but we went to the same movie houses and things, and we sat in the balcony and the white people in the, on the first floor. And um, the stores and things like that, we could go in any store there we wanted if we had the green stuff and buy whatever we wanted. So it was a different thing. Now, schools were segregated there, 
and I don't know if the church is or not. It felt more rigid to you when you got out. Of yes, it did because I think I expected too much. I forgot I was still in the United States. I think I absolutely expected too much of California, or California or any other part for that matter. And uh, did, it did see it didn't come into interpretation. I just uh, had to step back, and I didn't like it. But I say so. I'll have some money. What did the uh, what did the victory, Joe James victory, and his fight mean to you? Oh, like night and day, it just was a complete turnaround. It meant that we do have some rights, but we got to speak up and stand up for them, because people will push you as long as you let them. And when they see you'll fight back with something, words, action, whatever you've got, well, they'll have some second thoughts. And it just made me strong to see this strong black man coming out of Chicago to tell them, oh, no, we're not joining an auxiliary. We will be accepted in the regular union or none at all, and then we'll take you to court, which he did, and we won it. Judge Butler, I'll never forget that man. What a joyous day. I can't say enough for them. Tell you about... White and black people, huh? Mm -hmm. The judge was white, but he knew right from wrong. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.